Hi everyone. This video is going to discuss inequalities. In particular, we're going to look at different ways to write inequalities. Firstly, we'll look at writing inequalities in words, then using inequality notation, then how to draw an inequality on a number line, and finally, we'll look at interval notation. To start, let's look at some definitions. Firstly, what is an inequality? An inequality compares two values, showing if one is less than, greater than, or not equal to another value. You can also include ideas of less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. An inequality is different from an equation because an equation, you normally have one solution or two solutions or three or maybe no solutions. So for example, if you say X is equal to five, there's only one answer for that situation. However, if I say X is greater than or equal to five, there are many numbers that fulfill that inequality. X could be six, X could be 10, X could be an irrational number, for example, five plus root two. There are many, many numbers that would explain or would fit into the inequality X is greater than five. Some other definitions I'd like to revise. Firstly, real numbers. Now, real numbers are any number that could be represented on a number line. That includes rational and irrational numbers. Now, rational numbers are numbers that can be written like a fraction. So 5 over 6, or 10, or negative 3, or 100. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. For example, the number pi, or the square root of a number where there isn't a perfect square. For example, the square root of 2. Next, we're going to talk about natural numbers. Now, natural numbers are your counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. There are no fractions here, or no parts of numbers. They're only whole. However, the definition whole numbers is the natural numbers including zero. And the definition for integers is the whole numbers, including the negative numbers, but there are no part numbers. So one negative one and a half is not an integer. What I've also shown here is the symbols that are often used for these. Real numbers is an R, natural numbers is an N, whole numbers is an N with the subscript O, and integers is a Z. Now you could write these numbers using those special lines, or you could just use the letter R for real, N for natural, and Z for integers. The first notation we're going to look at today is inequality notation. This notation might already be familiar with you. On the left, I've got descriptions, and on the right, I'm going to write down the inequality notation. So firstly, x is greater than 5. The way I'll write that in inequality notation is I'll write down x, the greater than symbol, and 5. Now for this one, I could have also written it as x and written greater on that side than 5. And that means the same thing. So what you need to make sure is that, that the greater than is in the correct place. So if you look carefully, here, this part is the greater side and this part is the smaller side. So the X is on the larger side of five. Or if I wrote it this way, X is on the larger side of five. Let's look at the next one. X is less than five. So I'll write that like this. X is less than five. I'm not going to go through the alternate description for each one, but I'm sure you could work those out. Next one, X is greater than or equal to. Now the symbol you use for that is the greater than symbol and the equals to sign underneath. So I'll write it like this, X is greater than or equal to negative three. Now, if I go back to the first one where I said X is greater than five, this means that X can be any number bigger than five, but not including five. Whereas the, th the third one, X is greater than or equal to three, X can be negative three or any number greater. Next one says X is negative two or less. So that will be X is smaller than or equal to negative two. Now the next one might be new to you. It says X is between naught and 10. Now, the way to write that most efficiently is that you're going to make a little group. On the left, you're going to put the smallest number, and on the right, you're going to put the largest number. And x is between 
naught and 10. So what I've got here is x is larger than 0, but x is also smaller than 10. So I've combined these two ideas together so that x is between 0 and 10. Here's another one. x is negative 5 or more, but less than 5. So if I was to write that down, the smallest number is negative 5 and the largest number is 5. X is negative 5 or more. In other words, X is smaller than, so X is greater than or equal to 5, but it's less than 5. Now, the last one has the word or. And so what I've got is I've got two separate situations. It says X is greater than 5 or X is less than or equal to 2. So I'll write that down like this. X is greater than 5 or x is less than or equal to 2. Let's move on to drawing inequalities on a number line. Now with number lines, it's not that important to draw your number line to scale. What is more important is that you clearly show if the numbers are included or excluded in your inequality. So the way you show that is for numbers that are included, you use a closed circle. And if you think about numbers that would be included in an inequality notation, you're going to be using bigger than or equal to or smaller than or equal to. For numbers that are not included, we're going to use an open circle. And that will normally be for numbers that are greater than or smaller than. Let me explain. We'll give some examples. So my first question says, write an inequality notation. X is greater than 5. So I need to draw a number line. And I need the number 5 as my reference point on the number line. Now, X is greater than 5. So I know that X is going to be on the right of 5. But when I think about the number 5, 5 is not included, so I do an open circle on or above 5. The next question says, x is, or the next inequality says, x is less than 5. So if I draw a number line here, again, 5 is my important point, but x is now less than 5, and again, I'm not going to include 5. The next one's a little tricky. We've got x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And I have x is an element. So that's an element of the integers. So in other words, x is only certain values greater than negative 3. So I'm going to quickly draw a number line except I'm going to include quite a few values on it. Negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and so on. Now, x is only integers, and it is greater than or equal to negative 3. So I'm going to have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and so on, on my number line. Obviously, I'm not going to keep drawing for it forever. Okay? The next one says x is less than or equal to negative 2. That's a nice easy one. I just need negative 2 as my reference. Since it's smaller than or equal to, I'm going to do a closed circle. And my values for x that will apply will be smaller than negative 2. The next one says x is between 0 and 10. In other words, x is greater than 0 and x is smaller than 10. So on my number line, I need to have two values, 0 and 10. Now, it does not include 0, so I'll do an open circle above 0. And it does not include 10, so I'll do an open circle above 10. And then I'll join these two, showing the values for x that are valid will be the numbers between 0 and 10, but not including 10. The next question 
again asks me something with x as an element of the integers. So I'm only going to include the integer values here. So let's quickly draw my number line. I've got negative 3 as my smallest value. Negative 2, negative 1, 0. Oh, I haven't drawn my number line long enough. 1, 2, 3. And now let's put negative 4 in as well. X is greater than or equal to negative 3. So it'll be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. Close circle. 1, 2, but it won't include 3 because 3 is not included in this. So I won't include the dot there for 3. Okay, the last one. Again, I've got two points. I've got 5 is the larger value and 2 is the smaller value. So it's important to always, when you draw your number line, to have smaller values on the left and larger numbers on the right. And I've got two separate things going on here. The first bit says that x is larger than 5. So I'll do an open circle because it doesn't include 5. And, not and, or x is smaller than or equal to 2. So it'll be like that. The last kind of notation we're going to look at is interval notation. Now interval notation looks a little bit intimidating. However, once you understand what it means, it's not so bad. So let's break this down. Here I've got, at the beginning, x is an element. So what they're telling me here is x is an element. In other words, x values exist in the next bit that they're telling me about. Now the first value in the brackets is the smallest value. And the second part in the brackets is the largest value. Now the brackets, if you've got a square bracket, that means including 5, because that's the number. And if I've got a curly bracket or a round bracket, That means not including. Now, an interesting thing is, whenever you're using infinity, we will always use round brackets. And lastly, this bit at the end is just telling me x is a real number. In other words, any value on the number line. Let's quickly take a look at what this statement would look like if I'm writing it in the different notations. So in inequality notation, I know that x is greater than or bigger than, greater than or equal to 5. And it goes up to the largest value is infinity, which I don't need to write down for inequality notation. On a number line, my number line would look as follows. My reference value is 5. I'm going to include 5 and go larger than 5. So let's quickly recap what this means. X is an element, tells me the story is about X or the the um, notations about x. The first value in the bracket is the smallest value, and the largest value is the second value is the largest value, meaning the smallest value is 5 and the largest value is infinity. The brackets, if the bracket is square, it means the value is included. If the bracket is round, then it means the value is not included. Let's go back to the examples we were looking at earlier. Now what we did is we compared inequality notation with a number line. Now for both, we're going to write down the interval notation. So it's optional to write down x as an element, especially since all of these refer to x. Now since x is greater than 5, my smallest value is 5, and my largest value would be infinity. 
So and so I know that my smallest value is five and my largest number is the greatest number it could possibly be, which is called infinity. Now, since X does not include five, I use a round bracket for five. And you can't really include infinity because if you could include infinity, it would imply you could get there. So we always use a round bracket for infinity. So let's just quickly write here at the top, round brackets, we said was not including, and also we use it for infinity or negative infinity, and we use square brackets when we are including a value. Also, remember, if I go back to my number line, round brackets will work with open circles and square brackets will work with closed circles. So let's get back to the examples. X is smaller than five. So in other words, my largest value is five and my smallest value, I can't say. So I'm going to say negative infinity. So X is an element of negative infinity to five and I'm going to use round brackets for both. In the next question, we've got x is greater than negative 3, but x is an integer. So I know that x is an element. My smallest value is negative 3, and negative 3 is included, so I use a square bracket, up to infinity. But I also need to indicate it's an integer, so I'll say x is an element of the integers. Next one, my largest value is negative 2, my smallest value is negative infinity. So x is an element, my smallest value is negative infinity, my largest value is negative 2. It does cannot include negative infinity, but we can include negative 2, so I use a square bracket. Now interval notation is especially nice for writing the next example down. Because I know what my smallest value is, I don't know what my largest value is. So my smallest value is 0. And my largest value is 10. Neither 0 is included nor 10 is included. So I could leave it like this or I could write down x is an element in front. In the next one, I also have a little region selected. So let's do that part first. x is an element including 3 up to 3 but not including 3. And then I'm going to say x is an integer. Interestingly enough, if you wanted to, you could have used two there and a square bracket and you would have actually landed up with the same answer. In the last bit, I'm just going to write down two separate intervals because there are two separate pieces that are true. So let's write down the first bit. Now the first bit, x is smaller than or equal to negative 2. So my smallest value could be negative infinity and my largest value is a 2 included or x and then I'm going to have as an element of the smallest value 5 and the largest value it can be is infinity close bracket now what you'll find later in math some people instead of using the symbol or they use the symbol union like this but for now I think don't worry about that rather just stick with using the word or and you'll be fine